Mabuhay, I'm Mark. These are tips on how to shoot lag profile using the Filmic Pro app. Second part of the video is I'll show you how to color correct and grade it in post. First is to set our focus point, then lock it. Next is to correctly expose the image. By moving the round rectangle, find the balance exposure as much as possible. Before locking it, let's check the ISO and shutter speed. Tap the manual controls button. I have set the ISO to its lowest value at 50 since it's already bright outside. With shutter speed, the rule to get the right amount of motion blur is to double it based on the frame rate of the video. But in this case, since I don't have a neutral density filter to reduce the amount of light entering the camera's lens, I will increase the shutter speed instead and adjust it to get balance exposure of the entire image. A faster way to be able to know which areas are exposed is to use live analytics. By tapping A on the lower left screen, we are given four options. These are very useful tools. The quickest in telling areas of exposure is false color. It displays the complete picture of the video's exposure profile. Green areas are good, red areas indicate overexposure, and blue areas are underexposed. Now tap the imaging panel to set the white balance which is in the temperature sub panel. As much as possible when using auto white balance, at least lock it by tapping AWB. It turns red to indicate its lock. It prevents the white balance from being continuously adjusted while we are shooting. Much better is to choose the correct lighting to match the scene. I have chosen daylight. Before setting the profile to lag, the importance of using histograms cannot be overlooked. Thanks to Filmic Pro, it is readily available to us. By tapping the time code counter, histograms will help us gauge our exposure and identify if our exposure is evenly balanced. In the histogram, on the left side indicate our shadows of the image, on the right side our highlights, and in between are the midtones. Ideally, we want all the information to converge in the middle. If the values are inclining to the left side, it means we are underexposing, losing details with our shadows. If it's hitting the right side, it means we are overexposing and losing the details with the highlights, which we might not recover in post. We now go to the final part before hitting the record button. Lag profile allows us for greater flexibility in tone and dynamic range. It offers shadow and highlight details recovery. That's why we're going to boost the shadows and tone down the highlights. Don't worry about getting a noisier image. We can always crush the blocks down if we don't need the information. The important thing is it's there in case we need it. Select the imaging panel again, select Tone sub-panel. Choose lag among the four gamma curve options. Now boost the blocks to its maximum value without affecting the mid-tones. Above 80 should be okay. Then bring down the white points from 255 all the way to 170. We now have a very desaturated and low contrast image. Notice on the histogram, we now see all values are converging in the middle. And with false color, 100% of the scene is now exposed. This gives us plenty of room and flexibility in post. We've preserved the information by maximizing the exposure and dynamic range using the log profile. We're now in Final Cut Pro 10. To color correct and color grade the lag footage we shot using the Filmic Pro app. First is to open the video scopes. By default, it is on waveforms and luma. Let's check the histogram. Both are consistent with the Filmic Pro app. The details and information are converging in the middle. Zero is pure black, anything below it 
the details are lost. 100 is pure white and above it, the details are lost. This time, we will be using the waveform. Let us open the effects browser, select color correction, and drop it on our footage. We will be using two color boards. First is for color correction. The second color board is for our color grade. It is good practice to color correct first because we are going to adjust to balance the exposure and exposure affects color. With the first color board, don't touch yet the color and saturation. But let us deal with first with exposure. Bring down the shadows to zero or near it, then increase the highlights all the way to 100 or near it. Notice in the waveform so that not to exceed 100 or go below zero. Let's move to saturation and crank it globally. With these few steps alone, there is already a massive improvement from our original image. We now have a very workable image to start. With the second color board, we will color grade with a subtle teal and orange look. Drag the shadows to teal or bluish area. Then drag the mid-tones to the orange area. Make sure that the mid-tones and shadows are in line with each other. This is just a subtle color grade, but with practice, you can adjust the colors depending on the kind of mood you want to express in the image. Thank you for watching. Hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them below on the comment section. See you in the next video and God bless.